Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder to the 10 years anniversary sales and in this video I want to give you a good buying guide for all the naval premiums of all the nations of all the blue water and coastal fleet premiums of rank 3 and 4. A few exceptions here and there but that's what I intend to do of the premiums that are currently available with discounts. And um, before we go into the video, a few things ahead, a few disclaimers, if you will. Uh, prior to the sales, I made a lot of videos about all the premium cruisers except one, and you will find the links to those videos where you uh, hear me talk about the ships in more detail. You will find the links in the video description down below. So the next thing is that there are currently three expensive premiums out there on sale in limited quantity. Those are the US Kennedy's PT-109, the German S-204 Lang, and the Soviet Project 1124 MLRS. And those are $60, 60 Gaijin coins or 60 euros packs. Obviously, they are absolutely not, the, not worth the money. Why are they so expensive? Those are the premium packs of the beta entry. So they are very old and rare uh, vehicles at this time but they're not really worth the money. If you are a collector, obviously you will get them because whaling is the way of life. And to be honest, there are better options and I'll talk about them now. So we start with the US tech tree and obviously that is one of the strongest tech trees in the game. There is obviously a lot of options, but it boils down to three ships. Uh, let's put it that way. The first being the USS Frank Knox. It's not on discount right now, so it costs still 1,600 gold needles, but it has the joint highest civil line modifier in the game. And this is where rank three becomes so interesting because you get more kills, you have a more active gameplay, and the USS Frank Knox is absolutely amazing made a video about it um, so it has this anti-fragmentation armor it has high dpm guns 40 millimeter bow force 10 torpedoes um, it's absolutely fantastic and absolutely worth the price even though it's not on discount then we have the absolute no-brainer that is the uss moffat but rating 5.0 it sees many more up tiers versus 6.0 uh, and that is really a nasty battle rating, but other than this, brain dead. Um, weakness is surprisingly the AA, but it makes up for it by sheer DPM, and again, it lets you earn a lot. Made again a lot of videos about this. Then we have the USS Helena, which now costs 4,010 Golden Eagles. It's the tier 4 premium, and it is in typical US fashion, cladded in this infamous anti-fragmentation armor. Uh, it has really strong AA, 40mm Bofors and 5-inch 38s. It has hilariously high shell DPM from 15 6-inch guns. The shells hit hard and the ship also is quite survivable, even though it has only this small portion of belt. And the reason for the high survivability is, first of all, the main Amorex are buried deep below the waterline and are really difficult to hit. And then we have the turrets themselves with the strong barbets and turret faces so it's really tough to sink you need actually an enemy Helena Zenitsnyakov or Outrider battleship to sink it quickly the only bad thing is you don't have torpedoes probably the strongest recommendation especially for the US tech tree a special mention goes to the Frank Knox and the Moffat because they earn you so much more civil lines and that brings us to Germany uh, no sorry um, I forgot almost the patrol boats. Sorry about this. They're forgotten by Gaijin, so hey, I'm not the only one. We have two candidates out of all the options. We only have the Thunderbolt PT-556 and the USS Douglas. So the Thunderbolt PT-556 has here the meme quad turret in the back. Yeah, it's funny. The torpedoes are not the strongest and um, it's not really outstanding in any way, shape or form. There are better premium, uh, there are better uh, ships in the tech tree. And also if you have the PT-811 from the Operation Frost, 
probably the best patrol boat uh, in the US tech tree. Then we come to the USS Douglas. I also made a video about this one and forget about the main gun. It's only about those two missiles. Um, Again, if you're in a cap, you're uncontested and nobody shoots at you and you just pummel the enemies with those SAPHE missiles with 14 kilometers range. Yeah, you also can slave them to the radar so you can hunt enemy planes, which is meme worthy. Yeah, sure. If that's your thing, go for it. But I think that the price of 3045 gold needles is just too much. And you have to play it so much, so not really recommended. Then we come to the Germans and we have for the Blue Water only the Karlsruhe and the Prince Eugen. Let's start with the Karlsruhe. It's relatively cheap with only 2440 Golden Eagles. But, you know, battle rating 5.7. Um, the armor is so flimsy you can get Amorect on a regular basis by Moffats etc. And there are many out there. Your AA is okay-ish. It's better than nothing. Um, and yeah, you have some torpedoes. Other than this, it's not really that strong. I'm a little bit split on it because if you're in a good position, those guns are as far as, you know, six inch or in this case, 5.9 inch guns goes, really surprisingly efficient. And um, yeah, the torpedoes, if you get into melee range, just go and watch the video, uh, but be warned, it's not for a new player. It's more of a challenging. Uh, more of a challenge then we come to the prince eugen and the prince eugen it's in a pack so it will be on discount on the 7th of november if i have noted this to myself correctly where then you have 25 30 percent discount i'm not quite sure and yeah while it is a premium heavy cruiser and heavy cruisers aren't really that great especially in the current uh, helena era it's really good it has really strong uh, mid-range AA, all the 40mm Bofors on the German warship. The main battery is really nasty with a surprisingly quick reload of 12 seconds. You have lots and lots of those torpedoes and your armor, well, you know, there is a turtle bag, but I wouldn't really rely on it. So it's an overall really good long-range cruiser and it also makes you quite the bit. In my opinion, overall, better suited for newer players and for the overall grind of the German tech tree. Then we come to the coastal fleet and uh, there we have of rank three, uh, three options. Um, first, the S204 Lang, uh, there is even a better version in the tech tree, uh, so it's not really worth it as a grinder, way too expensive, way too expensive. Then we have the VS8, which I mentioned because it is a meme vehicle. It's not a good grinder in any way, shape or form. The, the firepower from the guns is bad at best. And it's the mines. In an artificial up tier, yeah, you really can make those battleships miserable. Um, I should make a video soon about it, how to actually use it. Uh, it's a meme vehicle. That's what it is. And that brings us to the only honest contestant, the M802. And the simple answer is no. No, not worth it. Way too slow, bad spawn, um, the firepower not really convincing. Yeah, sure, the 37 millimeters are meme worthy because uh, the most taka taka you have in the game, but not really worth it. And uh, that brings us to the Soviets. And the Soviets have here in the Blue Water Tech Tree um, basically three options. It's the Blagorodny, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, the Kerch and the Zelensnyakov. So go to the premium destroyer and yes, it is more of the sniper. The guns are surprisingly nasty for destroyers. Um, strong HE, stronger AP, considerably stronger than of the Moffat, uh, but you only have four guns and proximity the 45 millimeters. Only five torpedoes, but they hit harder and are surprisingly fast and long range. Uh, and you also can have those uh, mortars, I think they're called, and uh, depth charges, whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a meme. Um, overall, solid ship and also gets you a lot of several lines. And that is what really matters. Then we come to the Kerch, which is basically... Um, an Italian cruiser and the simple answer is no. 
only eight six inch guns no you don't have the armor speed um the torpedoes are not really that amazing you have too few the shells are not great the aa isn't great not a good option absolutely not worth the 3045 gold needles then we come to a really good ship again and that is the Zelensnyakov tier 4 and it costs 4010 gold needles the same as the Helena and yep those guns kick in teeth hard um, they are some of the hardest hitting 6 inch guns when it comes to the ammunition the AP is strong the sap is hilariously potent and yeah, you also have strong um, anti-aircraft. The survivability and the armor is overall less than on the Helena, but still it plays in the same ballpark, right? Um, it's just the Russian surprisingly more balanced version, let's put it that way. So I also recommend this one. And um, then we come to the premiums, of which we have at tier 4, 3 options. So here they are. You also have here the option of this uh, Squadron Activity Reward. Um, let's start with the MBK Project 186 MK85, which will set you back 1925 gold needles. This used to be hilariously overpowered, one-shotting everything that uh, made contact with the 85mm HE. Um, it has armor when you angle it. It's surprisingly effective versus 20mm fire. Um, but you really shouldn't rely on it. I have really old footage out there um, to show you what's going on. Uh, same then as usual with the Zelensnyakov. I also made a video about this one. But back to uh, the MBK. Probably at the moment not worth it. Then we come to the Rosso Macher. And simple answer is no. While it is hilariously difficult to kill for what it is. It's just boring. Uh, it's too slow, it doesn't have the firepower, and it's not worth 3,045 gold needles. That brings us to a really weird and outlandish looking MPK Project 1241-2P. Now, um, this is a bit too, more, too much modern for the meta of War Thunder. What I mean by this is, it doesn't have serious firepower. Sure, it has an automatic 76mm, but if you really want to use that firepower, go for the SKR7 and put a talisman on it, to which we will have uh, discounts soon-ish. So then we have the 30mm in the back, but you can burn this out quickly and you don't have enough ammunition. Yes, you have radar, but that's not really worth talking about. The depth charges are not really worth it. The torpedoes are meant versus submarines, so they don't have any sort of meaningful punching power. And yeah, you have those mortars, the RBU uh, 1200, but again, you have to be too close for comfort. And it's too slow, too clumsy, too big to really be worth it. Um, it's a nice idea, but not really viable in War Thunder. And that brings us to Great Britain, where we have basically only two options. That is the tier 4 um, Belfast, and that's a solid premium. Also made a video about it, and it is better than it looks like because it has those sap rounds. And, AP, and no AP, but HE. It has solid um, armor for what it is. Um, it has also solid AA but it has no torpedoes. So it's overall a decent ship. I just miss the thing that it's currently the only premium of interest. So uh, Haider and Cadiz are not available right now. Um, maybe on, um, on the marketplace, but that's not really worth talking about. And then the Le Orla. And the simple answer is nope. Just no. Just, just no. The British coastal fleet is an insult in of itself, with the only good ship being the brave borderer, but that's about it. And everything else is also not really... They can't really hold a dime to the American, the German or the Soviet coastal fleet, and they also 
already vary quite a bit in their power levels. So it's only the Belfast for the British. That brings us to Japan. And uh, this is an interesting mixture because we have in the blue water basically two kind of three options. The Yubari, the Shimakaze as a squadron activity vehicle and the Mikuma. So the Yubari is a little bit of a weird one. Um, the simple answer is no. Um, even though it might be at some point a bit difficult to kill, but it just doesn't have the firepower. It just doesn't have anything going for it. Um, it has surprisingly strong torpedoes for what it is. Eight of them. Um, but actually no. Then the Mikuma. Hmm. I call it the disabled torpedo monster in its video. And uh, when I played it, the AP just didn't kill enough. It doesn't have SAP. The HE is not good enough. And while it's also 15 guns, first of all, they don't have the rate of fire of the Helena. It's a much longer reload. And um, yeah, as you can see, the armor is really flimsy, quite the opposite of the Helena. The AA overall isn't really great. But the strength of this ship has to be said are the torpedoes. You have 24 long lances. They are highly efficient. They're the fastest, most long range torpedoes in the game, especially combined with this warhead and 24 of them. What is wrong about them? Well, first of all, torpedoes are torpedoes and you have horrible firing angles. The armor ain't really that bad, but it's just not good enough um, because the armor is not as protective as on the Helena. So it depends. If you like Japan, go for it. It's not a bad ship, but it just can't hold the dime to the previously mentioned three premiums. Go and check out the video. And that brings us to the coastal fleets. And there are two options, the Akebono and the PG-02. Let's start with the Akebono. And the answer is nope, not really. Um, it just doesn't have the firepower. That's it. Especially for this battle rating. It's way too big. Um, the two three inch guns just don't cut it. And uh, I like 40 millimeter bow force, but it needs to have more of them. Uh, no torpedoes, too slow, too big, no armor. That brings us to the PG-02, a hydrofoil that is ridiculously fast and ridiculously stupid and sets you back, what was it? 1925 golden eagles yeah um you have to disable this option here and then you have the high rate of fire but be careful you'll overheat the gun really quickly it has apds um, it is really great for capping also in an up tier it has radar so you know when planes are coming and that 20 millimeters when somebody is attacking you um, it's cool and yeah definitely a bit more exotic option if you will and um, I would take this over the Akebono any day of the week and that brings us to Italy and we have uh, basically two options the RN Tigre and the RN Polar of the Blue Water Fleet and currently there is nothing else in the coastal fleet that is really worth mentioning. The Spaviero is not in an offer right now. The RN Fulagra, Fulaga has no discount, is way too expensive and also doesn't really cut it. And the Fakia, well, it was summer 2020 event vehicle. Um, that would have been worth thinking about. And uh, that brings us to the RN Tigre. Um, yes, eight guns but simply no, doesn't have the DPM, doesn't have the rate of fire, the gun handling or the ammunition to back it up. It should be the equivalent of the Moffat, but it is 0.7 lower battle rating. And that's like one and a half worlds in between them in capabilities and not really worth recommended. It's not worth the 875 Golden Eagles. That brings us to the Polar, that is the last premium cruiser um, and that is just simply not worth the 4010 Golden Eagles. It doesn't have torpedoes, uh, the main guns are so much worse than the ones on the Prince Eugen. 
Uh, it doesn't have the A. The armor is strong, but not really worth mentioning when everything else gets just farmed. And that's just the TLDR of the ship. It's not worth it. It's absolutely not worth it. I'm really sad that I have to say this about the Italians. And to be honest, they are last and the least in this case. And I hope that you have found this video helpful in your decision making. Again, a quick reminder, go and check out the premium cruiser videos. Links are in the description down below. Let me know also in the comment section if you want to see similar guides with tanks and planes. And as usual, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Please give this video a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more. For you, it's just a couple of clicks. For me, it means the world. And we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder. Mm -hmm.